Hello, I'm Hushjo, and I'm here today to help take you to the next level with our little corgi that we've been working on for the last couple of weeks. So, I'm going to want to add some new layers. So, add two new layers, and we are going to have them both above layer three, which are our flat colors. It's going to be very important to keep layers in the right order. And a different order can mean a very different picture, because look what happens if I drag it up above the line work. It looks terrifying, doesn't it? And really bad. So you'll want to put that right back where it was, just above the background. Now for the first layer, we are going to add shadows. So let's go to the Select menu, choose Quick Mask, and we're doing it pretty much exactly as we did the flat colors. So for that, we're going to want to just put some nice shapes that give substance to the corgi's fluff. And you can be very free with this. All we're basically doing is just creating some element of just a little bit of three-dimensional quality. And since we have this shading here under his head and on his far leg, and this one is completely shaded, we can presume that the light source is coming from this direction. Let me put it on from this direction, basically. So all the light we want to cast on him is coming from that direction, so all the shadow should be over here. It's something that you can practice a lot, and it'll get easier. And there are a lot of there are a lot of situations too where there's not just one light source, so you can kind of play with it. And I also suggest that you look at pictures of people and animals and objects and things like that to get an idea of what they look like with different lighting on them. Lighting can make a huge difference on how a picture is presented, and certainly how it is received. And we're also just doing shadows on the white for right now, because nothing of the brown on this corgi is really in shadow. So we're going to just want to make these little shapes, try and make it a bit more three-dimensional, and you can you can do more if you like. I'm just going to do a basic sort of thing. But you can go around, you can define more of it. You can, uh, you can add much more nuanced and dynamic shading. And I fully, fully support any sort of experimentation that you might want to do, because that's the only way to learn. So let's just fill this in, let's fill this in. We've got all kinds of fun stuff we can do with this. So we're going to want to make these little shapes to look like the corgi is particularly fluffy here. So let's make little little bits like that. And we can put that in a lot of shade. And the great thing about it is that since this is a layer that is on top of our uh, line work, then it supersedes the line work, so we don't have to worry so much about it being exactly perfect with the flat colors that we laid down. So we don't have to worry about it being, for example, you know, perfectly with the strokes that we made before, because this is going to be over that. So you can just make a variety of, of these shapes, but I would suggest keeping it pretty light and uh, kind of fluffy looking. And of course, nothing's going to be completely perfect, but you can just give it little accents here and there. Give just a little accent here to reflect that. Soften up the edges a bit, not quite that much. And here on the underbelly, you can just do these light little strokes. 
village in. And since the corgi's fur is going to be shorter on the uh, on the stomach, we'll just we'll just give it this sort of these light little strokes that make it seem like shorter hair, but still very soft. Do there. Do a little bit up here because this is the biggest part of the pom pom. I'm not going to do it on the others. You can also go over here a little bit if you wanted to work with the gold, but um, I don't want to work with the brown just right now. I just want to do the white. So we're going to do blur as before and then deselect quick mask and then we're going to eye drop the corgi's main color. And since we're on the white, we want it to be very subtle. We want it to be kind of a subtle shade. So we're going to go less saturation and there you go he looks much more dynamic now much more three-dimensional but oops i left out this side so i am going to show you how to do it with the lighter pencil and i usually don't like to do this i usually like to do the quick mask because it is easier for me to see and distinguish between colors when I'm working with light colors, and you'll notice that here, I'm sure. But um, you can do basically the same thing with the lighter pencil or anything with a light sort of soft edge. You can also go in and if you want to use a pen and just the soft eraser, you could do that too. But this is also really helpful like if you saw something that you wanted to correct, or if you wanted to add something that you know, you hadn't done in the quick mask and you didn't want to do it for whatever reason, you can just easily do that with the lighter pencil. So that looks good. Now we're going to go to our highlights layer. So let's do another quick mask and go in here. We're going to do just the highlights where you would, where you would feel like yeah, that would that would be hit by the light and look lighter because of it. So don't go too crazy. Highlights are supposed to accent the picture. They're not supposed to be massive parts of it. But, you know, depending on the style you wanted to go for, you could, for example, do something like a rounded sort of light and do like little dots like that of, of the light reflecting. But as this isn't quite that cartoony and and the way that I do things is not generally that cartoony I don't want to do that with this but if you want to you should feel free to and you should experiment with it too and see what really works for you so I'm going to be doing highlights here but like I said you know you could do you could do the other parts of the ears with shadow and it'll be it would be fine but as that's the only part that I really feel like would need shadow on the uh, on the corgi I don't want to go to that trouble so there we go got some highlights up here I'm going to make this more integrated with the shape of the hair and I'll do a little bit accent here just because light doesn't tend to fall exactly on the same spot. So we're going to do the filter again, as before. Deselect, and we're going to eye drop the color. And since it's already up here, anyway, we're going to go, we're going to keep it up there, keep it bright, and keep it desaturated. So it'll be a nice little accent, a nice little pop, and it's a slightly different color than just the, the plain white, so it's not quite so stark, but it does provide a nice accent to the corgi and gives him more of a three-dimensional look. You could also do something like add a little highlight here, for example, or uh, closer up here, something like that. Um, or you could do something like that. It's very easy to do little highlights, little bits, and notice little things when you when you see them. But um, there are a lot of things you can do with highlights. But now I'm going to do the 
clip to layer below, and it is this icon right here, it makes sure that it doesn't go outside of where you've defined the flats. For example, if I did a new layer and did the color, I don't know, let's do this purple. Let's do purple. Turn it way up. So you can really notice that. That's a very noticeable thing. But if you clip it to the layer below, it's going to clip just like these layers below it to the flat colors. If you unclip it, obviously you can see all of that, but we don't want that, so we're going to get rid of that layer. And now I'm going to show you how to finish your piece to make it more beautiful for presentation. And you can go to the texture menu, or you can just choose any textures you like. You can download them very easily. Clip Studio Paint comes with a bunch of them. I like a nice fine texture. And as you can see, that looks terrible. But we're going to play with the blending mode of the layer. And you're going to want to put it on overlay. Doesn't that look much better? It looks much more subtle. And it also accents the colors. But that's not where it ends. We're going to turn down the opacity, and it's going to look much more subtle. So let's go in and look around. See, it looks like a piece of paper more now. It looks more natural. But I'm going to turn that off, make it invisible for a moment, because I've noticed something. Our corgi's nose isn't highlighted. We don't need to shade it, and it probably wouldn't show up very well since it's so dark. But we do need to highlight it. So I'm going to go to the highlights layer. I'm going to eye drop this and go to my lighter pencil. Now I'm going to choose a lighter color. And again, I'm going for the less saturated, but not white, so that we can actually notice it, and it gives it a subtle accent. So I'm going to just do this with a lighter brush. But you can see why I like to use the quick mask a lot, because it'd be so easy to go out of this. And you'd notice it here, but in some cases, you really wouldn't notice it until later. So just use that. And we can go back out, turn that texturing back on. It looks really good. And now I'm going to show you a really fun trick. And this is one of my favorite tricks ever. Go to the Layer menu and choose Merge Visible to New Layer. If you wanted to do it the old-fashioned way or a roundabout way, you could merge visible layers and then select all and copy that. And then undo it because you want to definitely have all the separate layers in your file. You never want to have a file saved that you're working on that doesn't have all those layers. You can export it to like a JPEG or a PNG or something where it will have only one layer when you've finished with it. But you always want to keep that working file in usually in the proprietary format of what you're using, like Clip Studio Paint uses .clip files. So, but merge this visible to a new layer and you're basically merging everything that's visible, including the texture, to a layer in itself. Now, go to the filter and choose the Gaussian Blur. I usually like to do it about 12, because that's my lucky number. But you can choose whatever number you like. I would say experiment with it, see what works. Usually around 10 to 12, I feel like, is perfectly good enough. Now, you may think this looks terrible because it is very blurry. We're going to leave it normal, and we're going to turn down the opacity. And I'm going to turn it to about 30. Now, the cool thing about this is, you may have noticed, it looks like it's glowing a bit. It looks like it's a bit soft focus, but it's not an extreme soft focus. It just makes it look better blended and thus more natural and better in general. So we can zoom out and we can see it looks a much softer picture now. The textures look softer. It looks softer in its presentation, and this is why soft focus is so flattering, because it has a little bit of blur to it that can forgive a lot of little things that you might otherwise not notice. And you can, you can use a higher opacity on this top layer if you want to if you want it to be, have more of a halation sort of effect. But as you can see, it is a very, very nice way to finish your picture. And I usually like it around 30. That usually 
it's not so blurry that it annoys the eyes, but it's blurry enough that it adds just that little bit of soft focus. But you can see, if we do away with it, it's much crisper and clearer. So you can just turn that back on, and you have the lovely corgi right there, ready to be posted anywhere, and ready to just show his love and his friendship for you. So I look forward, if you want to share your corgis or your, or your drawing, whatever you're drawing, you can use these techniques or any of it. I hope I will see that, and let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. I'll be bringing more to you soon. You're welcome. See you again. Bye.